Today we will look at the quadratic number patterns. Previously we dealt with number patterns with a constant difference and also number patterns with a constant ratio. But you will notice with a sequence like 1, 4, 9, 16 and so on, if you work out the constant difference, you will not get the same answer. You won't get the constant difference. So this is 1, 4, 9, 16. Now the difference is 3 here. And 9 minus 4 is 5 there. And 16 minus 9 is equal to 7. So we are not getting the same answer. So this is not a linear pattern. Try the ratios and see what you get. If you take 4 and you divide it by 1, you get a 4. But if you divide 9 by 4, you don't get a 4. You get 9 over 4. So already we are not getting a constant ratio here either. So this is neither a, a linear pattern nor an exponential pattern. We can classify this under quadratic number patterns. I'll show you a method of determining the general rule for number patterns like this. The general rule, remember, is what we mean by Tn. I want us to use the method where we can connect or link the position of the term to the term. So let's draw a column here. This is the position. And this is the term itself. So there's a number in position 1, which is 1 in this case. But in position 2, we have a 4. In position 3, there is a 9. In position 4, we have 16. And we want to know what will be in position N. And so in position N, we are looking for that term Tn there. Right, try the following approach. I, I want you to take your term and write it equal to the position all squared. This is because these are quadratic, so remember quadratic equations are squared. So the position is squared, then there is something else that we need to figure out here. So if we square the position, we can start from there and continue and get our answer. So let's look at what happens there. Our first term, for instance, is 1. That is 1. The position of 1 is 1, so let's take 1 and square it. Right, do I need to add anything else to make the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side? In this case, there is no need to add anything. But if you want, it means we are adding nothing. So 1 can be written as 1 squared plus 0. I'm referring to this 1 here. The term 1 can be written as the position of 1, which is 1 squared, plus something. Now let's look at 4. Our term there is 4. What is the position of 4? Four? 4 is in the second position, so the position should be squared. Right, do we need to add anything else in order for 2 squared to be equal to 4? Actually, nothing. But if you want to add something, just add a 0. Um, do the same thing for 9. 9, the position for 9 is 3, so 3 should be squared. And actually, we don't have to add anything. It looks like this is the number pattern. And we know 16 will behave exactly the same way. So we can now conclude that Tn must follow the same pattern as well. What is the position of Tn? The position of Tn is n, so we need to have n squared. 
and remember we are adding nothing in this particular case we're adding nothing so if we simplify this will give us tn is equal to n squared which is the answer that we are looking for the second question says determine the hundredth term now we want to know the hundredth term remember the hundredth term means t100 but we just worked out that tn is equal to n squared so t100 means wherever there is n we now put 100 so this is 100 all squared and if you multiply 100 by 100 you should get 10,000 so the hundredth term will be equal to 10,000 okay let's look at another example we need a general rule uh, first of all if you look at these two the difference between them will be 3 and the difference between 8 and 3 will be 5 the difference between 15 and 8 will be 7 so this is not a linear pattern actually we are adding a 3 first and thereafter we need to continue adding two more than whatever we added previously that is why we start by adding a 3 then we add a 5 then we add a 7 in order to get those numbers so if they ask you to extend the number pattern you know that you will need to add to 15 you will need to add this time a 9 and so 9 plus 15 will give you your answer of 24 so that will be 24 there okay but we are looking for the general rule I want us to use the same approach uh, the position and then the term in position 1 we have 0 the term that is in position 2 is 3 and the term in position 3 is 8 and the term in position 4 is 15 but we are looking for the term in position n which is called tn so if you think about this uh, take for instance that term 0 there right so 0 is in position 1 so 1 must be squared right after squaring 1 do you think 0 is equal to 1 squared that is not the case so in order for us to get the left hand side equal to the right hand side do you realize that we need to subtract a 1 so 0 can be written as 1 squared minus 1 I'm using the same format uh, you take your term and write it equal to the square of the position plus or minus something there right so let's move on to the 3 our term there is 3 the position of 3 is 2 so 2 is squared but 3 is not equal to 2 squared 3 is equal to 2 squared minus 1 let's do one last one let's use 8 the position of 8 is 3 so we put 3 squared there but 8 is not equal to 3 squared 8 is actually equal to 3 squared subtract 1 so you can now generalize and get tn so to get tn the position of tn is n so n must be squared and then 1 should be subtracted so this is how we get the answer right so we found tn is equal to n squared minus 1 what is t100 so where there is n we now put 100 so this is 100 all squared subtract 1 which is 10 thousand subtract 1 which should be 9999 